Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India afternoon i think we will quickly recap where what we were doing earlier and then go to the burn rate of composite propellants and also address ourselves are there some particular values of n the exponent in burn rate law r is equal to apn which which is necessary when we design these solid propellant rockets what we did in the last class was we told ourselves this is the propellant grain which is there inside a particular case this is the nozzle we ignite the surface of the propellant the surface regresses at a particular rate which we call as the burn rate and uh, what did we do for the case of uh, double base propellants we told ourselves we have nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin we had no2 aldehydes and also some other constituents here which react take the temperature from the surface temperature to the temperature at the edge of the fizz zone this was the foam zone which is a preheated solid surface of the propellant and then you had the fizz zone where the temperature went to T1 thereafter it remained constant at this value in this dark zone wherein essentially the reactions between NO and NH2 NO and CO do not generate much heat but thereafter the, the reactions generate heat and you get CO2, CO, H2O and all and in this case the temperature went to the final value. This zone, this particular zone of dark zone is there only for uh, pressures less than around 10 MPa or 100 atmospheres and at higher values what we got was the temperature directly goes to the value of Tf. Having said that we wanted to translate this into a, into the burn rate and therefore we again looked at the preheated zone, a foam zone, a fizz zone, a dark zone and a luminous zone we wrote the equations in this particular zone and what did we write it as we took a small element in the fizz zone this was at x is equal to 0 the fizz zone extended up to x is equal to l mind you the length of these zones are fraction of an mm thick we just extended it to be able to do all this we had a small element here with unit surface area and we said qx enters uh, heat enters heat leaves the, the heat leaving is in excess by this amount and the enthalpy that is the rate mass generation rate is equal to rho g into u g into specific heat into temperature it leaves at a temperature t plus dt and therefore this is equal to the excess heat transfer and the heat generated by the chemical propellants and we were able to write the equation and based on this equation we said we could get the temperature profiles for given values of u g p g and rho g right okay let, let's get forward we also found that in the zone wherein you have the dark zone the variation of the logarithm of the burn rate versus logarithm of pressure was slightly less because the temperature T1 which supplies heat to the surface is lower than when I had the final temperature directly supplying heat and therefore I have low exponent here and a higher exponent over here. We would like to do the same type of analysis for a for a for a composite propellant and a composite propellant is distinctly different from a double base propellant what is the distinction let let's put it on the board we have we said ap in the form of crystals and this ap is contained in the polybutadiene we could also have aluminum just like we saw in the sparkler when there is metal it is much hotter and that's why aluminum is put Therefore, you have something like AP solid crystals and in between maybe it is bonded by the polybutadiene let us say P band and this P band could either be HTPB or, or uh, let us say P band it could be some polybutadiene it could be polybutadiene acrylic acid acrylonitrile or it could be HTPB it could be CTPB this is the fuel or the binder. And when I supply heat and start making this burn, you know AP is NH4ClO4, right? 
it contains oxygen, it contains hydrogen, therefore I could get a flame, something like a monopropellant flame, this itself will burn. But the hydrocarbon which is over here, maybe the polybutadiene cannot burn because it is just hydrogen and carbon, it does not contain oxygen. Therefore, the volatiles of hydrogen and carbon come over here. Therefore, let me use a slightly different color over here to, to show this. Maybe this is the fuel vapor which is coming out, this is the fuel vapor which is coming out. This is a monopropylene flame and this flame is typically at a temperature of around 1600 Kelvin. Maybe whenever we are talking of this combustion taking place, we presume that combustion takes place at a pressure of the order of greater than around 10 atmospheres because we are not going to have rockets which have chamber pressure less than this. Therefore, we are talking of something like 1, M, 1 MPa pressure and at this pressure maybe I have the flame of AP which is coming over here, I have the vapor coming over here of this and this is the picture I can draw in my mind of what takes place. Mind you in practice when I look at the propellant, I will have AP, then AP here, I have AP here, I have small particles of AP here, I could have aluminum in between, I have small things. I am just magnifying this zone and separating it corresponding to this distance and putting this scheme to be able to formulate a model. I am interested in having a model which I can solve for writing an equation. Therefore, I have fuel vapor coming over here. I have oxidizer vapor which is terribly oxidizer rich and when the fuel vapor meets over here, I could have something like a zone wherein I could have something like a zone over here wherein again burning will take place between the oxidizer rich flame which is coming from AP and this will be something like mixing taking place or a mixing dominated combustion. Whereas over here it is just premixed, whatever AP is giving out as vapor, it comes out this. Therefore, over here I have what I will call as premixed, there is no mixing involved. At the edges, I transport the fuel here, I transport the oxidizer rich vapor here, when they meet, they mix and burn. Therefore, we call this mixing dominated combustion as diffusion essentially controlled by diffusion combustion, right. Therefore, above the vapor I have premixed combustion, at the edges wherein the vapor comes and meets these hot gases I have mixing dominated combustion and the temperatures here are typically at these pressures greater than 10 atmospheres around something like 3200 Kelvin. Well, gases are still reacting, this is still oxidizer rich, some of these a again products of combustion again meet over here, products from this come over here again meet it, therefore I have another mixing combustion here and this is the final diffusion flame. And the temperature here is typically around 3500 Kelvin. Therefore, what is the picture I am trying to draw? I am trying to draw a picture wherein or a model in my mind, a mind model wherein I have AP getting the oxidizer rich products which are essentially decomposition products which are premixed. They form a diffusion flame over here, the first diffusion flame, a, first, a diffusion flame over here. If I look over here, I will again get a diffusion flame over here, I will again get a diffusion flame over here, well I will get a final flame over here. And therefore, this flame and this flame are at 3200, this is around 1000 ad odd Kelvin and the highest temperature is reached over here. This could be my mental picture or model of combustion or burning taking place in a composite propellant. Well, this is distinctly different from what we had for the double base propellant wherein we had maybe aldehydes, maybe NH2, NO coming over here, you had a fizz zone, you had a dark zone, you had the second luminous zone whereas here I have a premix zone, a first diffusion and a second diffusion flame. Now, how do I solve this? It becomes a little bit erratic, right? 
it is becoming a little complicated because now I am talking in terms of a series of oxidizer particles over here. I have something like a premixed combustion taking place just above it low temperature. I have something like a diffusion flame over here at the edges over here maybe something like this I could have been either way and then I have a final diffusion flame over here. Now what is it I am talking of? I am telling well AP here may be the polybutadiene over here, AP over here and this is what I expect. If I were to have AP of smaller particle sizes, maybe I have smaller APs over here. Well, the zones will be something like this, something like this and my final heat release zone will be nearer. In other words, it tells me that the final diffusion flame because the length of this will be proportional to the size of AP, if AP size is less that the final diffusion flame will be nearer. I will still have these diffusion flames over here, the premix over here and I could still have this. Therefore, AP size will decide the distance at which the final temperature will take place. Now let us go through the same assumptions again. Let me assume that the final temperature of the combustion products is Tf and now I want to make an assumption. How do I solve this? I cannot have all these particles and keep solving it. Therefore, why not make an assumption? I say if this is my propellant surface, it is composite. I know the size of this is around 300 microns, the fine is around 30 microns. I cannot see that closely. Therefore, I have a, something like a distance of a centimeter or 2 centimeters or a meter. Now, I tell myself, well, the final diffusion flame formed is at a temperature Tf and it is formed at some distance away something like let us say x star a standoff it forms after some distance. Why does it form after some distance? Why does it not form at the surface? Well I have the AP flame first which forms then the mixing takes place then the secondary mixing takes place and then the final diffusion flames forms at some distance away. But this distance again is a fraction of an mm in practice just like in the sparkler we found we thought that it is at the surface but if I take a take a magnifying glass and see well there is a distance over here. Therefore, now I think I am in a position to write an equation for this. The final temperature is Tf, well this is the propellant surface over here. I am interested in writing an equation for the burn rate so many meters per second. Now this we can readily do, let us let, let us look at this slide again. This where I show I have 3 AP over here, I have the shaded portion which is the monopropylene flame that is the premixed flame and then I have the vapor coming from these hydrocarbon. This is pure vapor when it mixes with the oxidizer rich gases I have a zone of diffusion flame over here, I have a zone of diffusion flame over here and the products from this diffusion flame and this again meet and give me a final diffusion flame here and the distance between this final diffusion flame and the surface is what we call as the standoff or the height x star. If this part is clear I go to the next one, well it becomes quite simple now for me. I say this is my final zone, I have a standoff distance as x star and this is my surface and the surface temperature which is Ts, mind you the propellant gets heated here from initial temperature to the surface temperature and in this gas zone I say that the temperature varies between Ts to the final value. This is the mental model I have that is the model for the combustion or burning of a propellant. At this point I thought I should illustrate what happens or many of you are working in combustion. These are the experiments which we, have, we were doing in the lab. I have something like butane gas coming over here and when I ignite butane gas in an orifice, at the orifice itself I have a flame like this. I increase the velocity, well at the surface I do not have combustion but it takes off after a certain distance I have mixing taking place in this zone and thereafter I have combustion and still at a higher velocity well I have this zone is the zone wherein mixing taking place it is at high velocity the heat is insufficient to propagate the flame into this I have something like a standoff distance here. Well the standoff distance is something on these lines but not precisely because of velocity but it takes a certain distance for the final diffusion flame to form. Therefore, I would like to write an equation for this. 
let us write the equation. The my equation is we we have the surface here, we have the final diffusion flame over here, we have the propellant over here T f, we have the surface temperature T s and we also found that if I were to plot the temperature distribution along this, that means this is my propellant here. I show this as temperature, this is the distance over here. In the depth of the propellant, the temperature is the old value that is the initial temperature and then what happens near the surface, the temperature increases to T s at the surface and then in the flame zone it further increases to something like T f over here. Mind you, this is my increasing direction of T and this is the distance from the in depth propellant wherein the depth of the propellant is still at the initial value at the surface I have an increase in temperature T s and it goes to the gas value. Therefore, now I want to know what is the heat which is coming on the surface I am interested in finding the value of kg dt by dx at the surface of the propellant and this I can approximate it by saying that the temperature increases to T f from the surface value over a distance and if I say this distance is like something like a x star, I just use this word x star, I will give you the reason for using it is equal to k g into something like T f minus T at the surface divided by x star. This is a very simple method, you know there are various flame models which are used for for describing the combustion of composite propellant, but this particular one was formulated by one Professor Hermans, he was at Waterloo University and it was very simple and is very illustrative. Therefore, I just use this, there are various models, these say granular diffusion or some flanks model, but I do not see anything more coming out of those models compared to this simple model. Well, this is the heat which is coming to the surface, I say this is equal to Q dot S. I consider unit surface area therefore, it is so much joules per second per meter square this is the units of this over here. Mind you A is unit surface area and where does the heat go? The heat goes to increase the surface temperature from the initial value T i to the T s value. Therefore, what is it? Let us say that the rate at which the propellant regresses or burns is equal to m dot. Then what happens? the temperature I have specific heat into it increases to the surface value from the initial value plus some heat is also supplied. Suppose at the surface I have some endothermic reactions taking place because I have the binder, I have something like binder over here which I call as polybutadiene, it has to get heated, it has to supply the, it has to vaporize and all that I need to supply this therefore, I say I need to supply some Q chemical to it, some, some endothermic reaction Q chemical and therefore, this heat goes to supply this and therefore, I can write my equation as K g into T f minus the value of T s divided by x star is equal to m c m mass m dot. Then now I take C outside and now I have T f minus T s and instead of writing Q chemical as the total heat release at the surface, I say heat release per unit mass, then it becomes I, I now say well my let Q dot chemical be equal to heat release per unit mass then I can take M outside and then now I say this becomes Q dot chemical over here. I can now write my equation as thermal conductivity of the gas into the flame temperature minus the surface temperature of the propellant divided by the flame standoff is equal to the mass which is getting released at the surface into the density at the surface, no into the specific heat of the surface mass into specific heat into the surface temperature changes to T s from the initial value T i plus I have heat which gets 
released at the surface might be an endothermic reaction at the surface q dot chem and therefore, this gives me my energy balance equation. Namely, this is the heat which gets trans translated or transmitted from the flame to the surface and this helps to increase the surface temperature to T s from the initial value and also supplies the energy required to, to vaporize the surface or to convert the surface from solid to vapor through a set of endothermic reactions. Therefore, now using this particular reaction, if I have to write the value of m dot, m dot is equal to the thermal conductivity of the gas region, then I have the flame temperature minus the surface temperature divided by the flame standoff distance divided by the specific heat into the surface temperature minus the initial temperature of the propellant plus the value of heat release due to chemical reactions at the surface. Actually in this I need not even put dot here because it is just the magnitude of heat release and therefore, maybe I should do away with the dot here and just write k g into T f minus T s by x star divided by C that is the heat required plus the endothermic reactions at the surface which causes it. Now, I want to discuss this, this particular value of mass release and the mass release at the surface can again be put since I considered m dot maybe I consider units, unit area over here maybe I say m dot is equal to rho p r or rather the burn rate can now be written as k g into T f minus T s divided by x star divided by m dot is equal to rho p into r because the you have so much meters per second, so much kilograms per meter cube. Therefore, I have density of the propellant coming over here into C into T s minus T s plus the value of Q chemical. Now, let us examine this equation under different conditions, I find that there is a flame which is standing off at a distance x star from the propellant surface and this the change of x star, let us again sketch it, we have seen this sketch several times during this class. We have the flame at a temperature T f standing at a distance x star. Now, if the size of the ammonium percolate particle size is small then the mixing will take place immediately near to the surface and the flame will be near 0.1. If the chamber pressure on the other hand or if the pressure at which the burning rate is evaluated is high, if the burning if the pressure is high you have more number of molecules which can react and therefore, the x star can come down. Therefore, what is the inference which can we can draw? Well, if I have fine A p particles, fine ammonium percolated particles in the composite propellant, then it is quite possible that x star will be smaller and the burn rate will be higher 0.1. If the value of pressure at which the burning takes place is somewhat higher or large let us say, then chemical reactions get finished in a very short time and therefore, x star will be small and if x star is small, well the burn rate will be higher. Therefore, a higher value of chamber pressure also leads to a higher value of the burn rate r. Therefore, you know we are finding certain things Maybe if the pressure is higher, the thermal conductivity of the gas will be higher and therefore, again burn rate will be higher. Again rho p is the density of propellant does not change, Maybe the surface temperature effects will come in, Maybe the endothermic reactions activation energy will come in, but for something we are finding that pressure is a major factor because pressure decides the value of x star and therefore, you remember when we did double base propellants, we could say that the burn rate law could be expressed as in terms of St. Robert's law as r is equal to a p to the power n. We find here also as pressure increases the flame comes nearer and therefore, a similar law that is the same law r is equal to a p n can also be used to determine the burn rate of composite propellants. Now, depending on the value of n, 
the effects of pressure are modeled, but what is the value of A? A will depend on the size of ammonium percolate particle size, maybe the exoth the activation energy of the endothermic reactions and maybe some of the compositional aspects like initial temperature of the propellant. As the initial temperature increases, I find that the denominator decreases and R increases. Therefore, the effect of the initial temperature, maybe the activation energy, maybe the ammonium percolate particle size, AP size and all are embedded in A. Therefore, we can conclude therefore, that the same law R is equal to APN, which described the burn rate of double base propellants is also used, can be used for composite propellants. And therefore, the burn rate can be expressed in this particular form. Very simple, but very illustrative and we must be able to write such expressions for any, any system and do a problem. Maybe wood smoldering, maybe carbon or maybe some charcoal burning, such type of models are possible. Therefore, let us summarize it again in, in terms of this slide. We said we had a flame zone at a distance x star away. Then we, we, we had two zones like premix zone and this and we got the expression for R. And let us now go back and examine the value of R. How should it change with pressure? Could I wrap this off? Is it, is it clear to each one of us? Now, now I would like to use that equation and plot the value of the burn rate, the logarithm of burn rate versus logarithm of pressure because we said, well burn rate for composite can also be described by the Philae equation or the St. Roberts equation which is R is equal to APN. We said, well R with this as per this equation is like this, but if I operate at low pressure region, pressure regions in this particular range, let us say less than some threshold value, let us say P star, less than some value. I have to still determine this value. What happens at low values? Maybe AP will decompose, but then the hydrocarbon vapors are coming and you know the what happens is the, the rate of decomposition at low pressures is somewhat limited by the kinetics. Why kinetics? We always write Q dot chemical is equal to maybe a p to the power n exponential of minus e by r t and this is what we said is small q dot chemical per unit mass over here and therefore, at lower pressures I have lesser amount of energy getting liberated or this becomes a controlling parameter because this fellow still generates vapor, but this fellow is missing. Therefore, this is something which is controlling. Therefore, at low pressures I can say well in this case chemical kinetics or AP decomposition controls. When I talk of higher pressures, the diffusion is independent of pressure. At higher pressures, I am getting copious amount of this coming out because the reactivity has increased, but the mixing of gases is independent of pressure and therefore, mixing gets controlled and therefore, in this zone, I have something like mixing controlling the, the, the final diffusion flame. All what I am trying to say is over a, normally I would get the same n over the region this is what I was expecting, but the phenomenon is changing. At low pressures I get premixing or premixed flame dominating or this is the limiting factor which controls the final temperature. Whereas, at very high pressures diffusion is less and therefore, since it is less it becomes the controlling factor because this is available to you, but this is not allowing the availability to get back into the final temperature and therefore, I say it is mixing control. In other words, if I were to again replot this, I have a region in which I have premixed combustion controlling and at higher pressures I have something like diffusion mechanism controlling. And this pressure is of the order of something like little, little bit more maybe something like 15 atmospheres or so and what happens is whenever it is premixed control I have a higher value of n because 
it goes as p to the power n what is controlling and if it is diffusion control I have something like n which is lower. Therefore, for composite propellants what happens? It is different from double base propellants in that if I were to plot the value of logarithm of burn rate versus logarithm of pressure, I have something like high value here, high value, smaller value of n over here or rather the burn rate goes something like this. Whereas, what did we have in that case of double base propellant? It was just the opposite. We, we had at higher values, we had a steeper value something like this and at lower value we had this. In fact, we had something like this in the case of double base whereas, in the case of composite is the reverse and we have small n at the lower pressures and uh, uh, higher value of n at the lower pressures and smaller value of n at higher pressures, uh, higher value of n at lower pressures. I think this, this distinction must be clear. But normally most of the rockets we operate at pressures in excess of this and therefore, we will say that n typically is around 0 0.3 to 0 0.25 to 0 0.35 whereas, in this region wherein n is nearer to something like 0 0.4 to 0 0.5, we have premixed combustion n between this is what we operate and it is diffusion dominated. I think I showed this in this particular slide wherein I said at, at a pressure less than a threshold value, I have premixed a higher value of n followed by diffusion wherein I have a lower value of n. I think this is about it and now if this part is clear, I can go to the choice of n which is necessary for me to give the particular criterion of how I choose a propellant, what must be the value of n which gives me stable burning. Can I say I have understood the burning rate loss? Now, if I were to question you before getting into this, what should be the burn rate law for a composite modified double base? I know for a double base the burn rate law, I know for a composite the value, we can say composite modified double base should incorporate both these features and give something like average of these two. In other words, composite modified double base will give a value of n which is slightly lower than for double base. For double base you know it is all premixed therefore, n is high for double base. For composite at the regions of interest n is low therefore, for composite modified double base n will be smaller than for than, than for double base. If I were to consider something like uh, uh, nitramine propellants, well in nitramine propellants I had HMX, I had binder which were mixed together both of them are premixed and therefore, n should be high. That means, in the burn rate law R is equal to A p to the power n, n is higher for nitramine propellants for CMDB it is less than double base, but higher than for composite. I think this is the way one should take a look at it. It is possible to do the same type of analysis for this and come to the same conclusion. I think let us keep it in mind we should work out some numerical problems for burn rate and put things together. But what we have done is for double base yes we looked at the evolving layers like uh, fizz zone, dark zone and also the second luminance zone whereas, for composites we use the simple Hermann's model wherein we talk of a flame standing away from the surface by a standoff distance. We also know what this standoff mean, means right. When a gas comes it takes some time for things to chemically react and form a flame. I would now like to ask myself as I was telling you, if I have R is equal to A p to the power n, can I formulate a law which says n should be small, n should be greater, what should be the value of n which I want? Should I have n equal to infinity? Should I have n is equal to 0? 
what is the value which will give me a good burning in a rocket. Therefore, for that let me go ahead let us say I, ha I now uh, come back to a system of a solid propellant rocket. I tell myself well this is the propellant what I have in a rocket as it is. This is my burning surface area S B. In other words I have if I take a section over here this is my surface this is my burning surface area S B meter square and this is where the burning takes place and gas is getting released and the gas gets pushed out through the particular nozzle. Let us put some numbers down we will call rate at which mass is getting generated from this surface area as equal to m dot generated m dot g. The rate at which gases are leaving the nozzle we will call it as m dot n. Can I write an equation for the dependence on m dot g and m dot n from this. Let us consider the case wherein I have a certain volume let us say this particular volume over here is V let the pressure in this volume be P let the temperature of the gases be T. How do I write an equation mass gets generated over here m dot g it leaves the control volume of this volume at a rate m dot n. What is the equation I have mass balance if I were to write what will I get yes. m dot g yes you are telling it should be m dot g minus m dot n gas leaving should be the rate of accumulation of gas in the particular volume of the chamber. What is the value of m from gas equation we have P v is equal to m r t the pressure is P small p the volume is V the temperature is T therefore m is equal to P V by R.